There aren't a lot of things I've been sure of lately, except that everything changes and life waits for no one. I'm trying to put this past year in words that reflect every emotion and how I was feeling, living life the way I've lived this past year. It hasn't been easy, but it has been rewarding. There are moments you have to be there for. The little ones you just happen to catch at the right moment. A time where everything seems so important in the simplest ways possible. The times where you find yourself completely wrapped up inside someone else. And the times where being alone is the best remedy. Life is about being someone's quiet in a screaming world, even if it's only for yourself. I honestly really like this one. He's nice and he's polite and he writes pretty words and <sighs> Ross, that's I'm awesome. Really happy. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. It's awesome that you're finally being able to get happy in this. What about you? I definitely met someone. Yeah. There was a point in my life where I'd lay awake at night and think about how much I didn't like the person I was seeing and how I couldn't help but feeling like I failed to learn from the world in a classroom every day. Most of all, I felt completely unmotivated to be a part of whatever life I was living. I couldn't change my own reality even though I knew life was never supposed to be like that. It was supposed to be a beautiful adventure. And then it finally happened. For the first time, it was uncontrollable trust, not predictable disheartenment. And I finally learned that things shouldn't feel forced, fake, or strained. They should just be. It works or it doesn't. And when issues arise, it should only resort in communication for a better understanding, not for any other reason. Sometimes 
Sometimes people don't see things the same as you do, as you're experiencing them. And that makes understanding difficult. No, mom, mom. Mom, no, if, if, mom, you know what? Bye. This is my fault, isn't it? No, she's, she's just crazy. It's not your fault. Things are constantly put in our way to test our boundaries and push our perception of ourselves, changing the way we look at things in a lot of different ways. And sometimes they unfortunately get the better of us. I have lost my entire family. I have nothing to go back to. My mom is freaking nuts. My grandparents, I can't talk to them because I'm afraid she'll turn on them. I can't talk to my little sisters because then they'll get in trouble for talking to me. I have nothing anymore. That's not fair. I left my job and my roommate bailed on me because I put you over him. So don't say I didn't sacrifice anything for you. So just being like that. He's paranoid all the time. And it's like a cracked in his brain, just cracked open. I'm so sorry. It's rough with us, too. I was so mad that he was hiding me away from the world and that I thought he was ashamed of me. And it turns out he was just trying to keep me like as his little escape from the world. And I ruined that. And I just I feel so selfish. I mean he can't make a home out of you, but it is important what he was trying to show you by doing that. I realized that now, and I could have probably gotten out of it out of him like some other way, but like now I've almost ruined it because I was just so like adamant about finding out what like what this thing was that you know, was bothering you finally we're able to be open. I'm too selfish and you're not selfish enough. But sometimes we reach a point where there is no return. At least not for now. Not for who we are at that moment. There has to be a point of no return when it comes to losing and finding yourself all over again. Not the reckless kind. The understanding the fact that there will always be parts of you you find and leave behind. Like the part of myself I found on our first date, and the part I left behind when I pulled out of my driveway the last time I went home. The most important lesson of finding and losing these pieces is understanding they're what makes you you, and there's only more to find. I don't know a lot about life. But I know a lot depends on perspective and the reality you create for yourself. I thought my story needed to be told, and of course it does, but not yet. I thought once I spilled it onto paper I'd receive a sense of clarity and righteousness, but I didn't. And I couldn't because my story isn't even remotely over. Writing about the past year, it wasn't about all the drama or love or rebellious nature of things. It was about the experience and that seemed like much better thing to anticipate and look forward to than reflect on. It's the people we pass by each day, the people we sit next to in class and the people we work with. It's our best friends, our families, and our existence that brings us all together, constantly creating this vision of a work in motion we seldom notice. It's little moments that surpass the big ones any day. All these things, the important things, they seem so out of focus to us in the moment. But they're what creates and destroys us. It's all about the way we perceive. It's how we want to see ourselves. And that's the beginning and end of the reality we make for ourselves each and every day.